Hi, Choose Life Nation. This is Dallas Cohen, The Rebound Coach, and you are watching or listening to an episode of The Rebound Coach Live. Y'all, I'm excited that you're here today. Thank you so much for joining me. If this is your first time sharing virtual space with me, I'm Dallas Cohen, The Rebound Coach again, and you may be like, um, what exactly is a rebound coach? I've never heard of that. I'm a life coach and I help people come back, <laughs> help people bounce back and rebound. And y'all, that happened from my own, uh, my own life story. I help women who have been betrayed uh, or have a history of betrayal, trauma, or abuse reclaim territory in their relationship with themselves. And that started with my own life. Um, I was married 10 years to this man who wanted me dead. And he almost had the chance to um, take my life. Unfortunately, he almost had the chance. Um, that didn't make sense for someone like me. You know, I was raised in a good godly home. I had parents that loved God, loved each other, were married for a lifetime, had a lifetime of ministry, and uh, just weren't the kind of people that raised a kid who married an abuser, right? Didn't make sense. At the same time, I was uh, molested from the time I was eight to the time I was 16. And that radically affects how you see yourself in a household of faith, how you relate to God. And as a female, how I related to men or boys. So fast forward, I met the man that I married and eventually divorced. There were definitely red flags, definitely signs um, that this wouldn't be a great experience. However, um, I believe God's answer was yes. I'm a praying woman. I was then. I am now. I believe God's answer was yes. And because of that, I believe that whatever came, we'd outlast it. We'd overcome it. God would swoop in and save the day and um, things would change. And I can tell you that God did swoop in and save the day, just not in the way I was expecting. Um, we got into this cycle of what I call coping and crisis. So this is where you're not happy. You never quite get to happy, but you um, you cope. You learn how to cope. You walk on eggshells. You learn their patterns. You learn, you do your best not to upset them, right? So I was doing that coping for a while. And then something would happen no matter what I did, no matter how careful I was, there was a blow up. And it was outrageous. It would explode all over everything. And that the careful house of cards that I put so much effort into um, holding together, trying to make my life work, uh, would fall apart in these crises. And then we very carefully put the house of cards back up. And this lasted the better part of nine years. Come the end of 2019, beginning of 2020, everything blew up. Okay. He was a serial adulterer the whole way through, but he finally left for another woman. And I found out um, the day after he and that woman had been plotting my murder um, and had been for months by the time I found out about it. So needless to say, like your whole world stops when you find out information like that. Your whole, whole world stops and you have really important questions to answer and really important decisions to make. and. Um, it was scary. It was kind of that record scratch moment where everything stopped and you're threatened as a wife, as a mom, as a woman, as a child of God, right? But also as a coach, I'd been coaching maybe five or six years by then. I've been a coach 20 years overall, over 20 years. Um, but I was coaching five or six years at that time, specifically on relationships and marriage in the faith-based space. So if you can imagine um, building a platform, we use that word here often, platform. If you can imagine building a platform around this idea of um, staying married, and that's the reason, you know, that's the only thing that pleases God. Everyone should stay married, no matter how hard it is, no matter if he mistreats you, you should stay married. And uh, that's the only way to be right. And I was very concerned with being right. So if you can imagine building an entire platform on that idea and that being the very thing that blows up in your face, that being the very thing that's in pieces on the ground. And it's like, it's like a teenage pregnancy. You can't hide it forever. And so um, through a series of divine, and I mean, supernatural events, 
<laughs> I'm alive today. I'm here. Um, my daughters and I are safe and we are unlearning and relearning. And we've been on that journey for years. I can't imagine. I, you know, the story I just told you, I said the be the end of 2019, the beginning of 2020. And I've told my story many times over these four years. And it used to be that that wasn't that long ago. And now we're in 2024. It's been four years. Wow. <laughs> just kind of, wow. I am amazed by God's grace. I'm thankful. I'm thankful for God's grace and God's love and protection over us. And um, all that we've lived through and continue to live um, and continue to thrive. So y'all, that was a lot. And I wrote this book because <laughs> um, honestly, it came out of the crisis. So I had uh, a DCF worker or um, a child protection person uh, visiting my home in the midst of all of that trauma and drama. And one of their uh, things for me to do was to write down everything that happened in like a timeline sequence. And it's really good to ground you in reality. If you're dealing with a narcissistic abuser or someone who is making you doubt your brain, your memory, your sanity, um, marking down a timeline is really helpful. And that timeline became the basis of my book. I wrote a memoir, y'all. It's literally called I Choose Life <laughs> because I could allow the identity that my ex-husband had planned for me. And quite frankly, the one I had agreed to tell me who I was, tell me how I was allowed to live, tell me the affection I was allowed to give my children, to tell me how I was allowed to express myself as a believer in Christ. Or I could choose life. Ding! <laughs> and this book is not only my story. It is my story as a memoir, but it's not only my story. This is a roadmap. This is a breath of fresh air. This is um, you're not alone in paper form. OK, um, if you have experienced betrayal, trauma or abuse or, you know, someone who has this book is for you or for them, I highly recommend that you pick one up. You can get one of these books at the rebound forward slash book. That is the rebound forward slash book. You can get this paper copy right here that I will sign and mail out to you or you can um, go to Amazon and get a copy from them. Or you can get a, an ebook through Amazon as well. All of that information is at thereboundcoach.com forward slash book. Okay. How to walk through the valley of the shadow of death. <laughs> That's pretty serious. And I know we're in the beginning of the year where everyone is talking about how prosperous this year is going to be and how wonderful it is and all the great things God said about it. Yes. Yes. I'm with you all the way. Here's what I have seen and experienced in the midst of getting to your next level, in the midst of growing and going, in the midst of all the things. I think when we, when we imagine getting to the next level, when we imagine whatever we define success as in our lives, we imagine it falling on top of us as we are, like the big opportunity, the big change the big shift is just going to fall on us ah! and all we have to do is sit there right it's going to fall on us and then we're going to be like haha it is here <laughs> i think that is the way we imagine things but not really the way they are what i've learned and what i've shared the last few weeks um since 2024 is rolled in in order to get to the new we have to get rid of the old we have to make room for the new by getting rid of the old. And that is an intentional work. It's not um, automatic. It's an intentional heart work. It's a mind work. It's a soulish realm work. It's a physical, in your physical space work. And it's something that um, the Holy Spirit has just enlightened to me as stuff, stuff we got to do. Like, let's get rid of the old, get rid of the old, get rid of the old. I was real. I was wondering why it looks dark. It's because my backlights aren't on. And that's okay. They're not going to be on right now. Because <laughs> here we are. I was like, you know, it's darker than normal. Okay. So um, how do you know if you're in the valley of the shadow of death? 
Like that sounds pretty serious. And I know that David who wrote that in the Psalms was in a pretty serious situation um, to say, though I, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. So, so let's unpack that. What does that look like for us? How do we know if that's the situation we're in? I would say um, that would be feeling pressed in on every side, feeling attacked, feeling like, um, and I would say, especially in areas in which you excel. So, and this is how we know we're anointed for something. This is how we know we're anointed for something when someone attacks that. Um, I know that I have anointing in helping people in a relationship because of the attack I experienced in it. I know that I have um, anointing in helping people recover from abuse because I've experienced that. So the same way, I know that I have anointing as a speaker because I was being attacked as a speaker or as a coach or as a professional, right? So if you look on your life, if you look at, you know, where have they attacked me? What are they saying about me? Um, what are they saying I can't do well that I know I can do well? How, where, are the, what are the areas that my integrity is being attacked? What are the areas that my competency is being attacked, right? That helps you know. And especially if it's more than one area, if you got a problem at work and a problem at home and a problem at school and a problem at church, and a problem in your house and a problem in your body, and it's all over everywhere and all the, all the, all the things are screaming at you, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? <laughs> right? <laughs> that's happening, right? That's, that's a signal. That's a sign. If you are constantly weary right? Weariness. Now I'm not talking about, Hey, I'm, I'm busy and I'm tired, right? Like tired is the state of being that a lot of people in our culture live in. I'm not talking about tired. I'm talking about weary and that's different. That is, you know, I'm trudging on, but I don't see a light. I don't see a reason for me to trudge on. I don't see value and benefit out of this, right? That's one of the ways we know we're in the valley of the shadow of death. Okay. But I will tell you, okay, so how do I walk through this? I actually, normally I have like three steps for you. I've got like six <laughs> because, it's, because it's a lot. So if you're taking notes, you can pop notes in the comments and then come back and review it, right? Like if you're watching on your phone or something. Here's what I would recommend. Tips on how to walk through the valley of the shadow of death. We know the way out is through and the way out is up like up over the circumstance and through. So you, if you stop in the valley of the shadow of death and you just stop there, um, a lot of bad things can happen like panic attacks and depression and hopelessness and suicidality and all the things, right? Um, that happens when we just sit in that valley instead of move, move, move forward, move back, move up, move. Don't stay, don't stay, don't stay, move, move. So number one, how to move, how to walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Number one, keep your eyes on the prize. Keep your eyes on the prize. What is the prize? <laughs> you can, you know that. I don't know that for you. What does success look like? What does, what does victory look like in this situation? If you could wave a wand over it, if, <laughs> if you could wave a wand over it, what would the outcome be? What, what would the ideal outcome be? And focus there, focus there, not on all the reasons it couldn't, it shouldn't, it won't focus on where you want to go. Keep your eyes on the prize, know your standards as well. Know your value system and how you operate, how you're deciding to operate, regardless of how other people are operating. How are you operating? This is valuable. This is important. Um, know your standards, know your boundaries, know your, your MO, you know, why, why you're making a choice that you're making. It helps you. It helps you make decisions when you know what your values, your core values are. It's really important. So number one, eyes on the prize. How do I, how do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? Number one, keep your eyes on the prize. All right. Know your standards. Number two, choose peace choose peace. If there's chaos all around you, chaos and chaos brought on by 
abusers or bullies or gossips or um, just drama, right? If there's if there's drama and trauma and chaos all around you, and you're invited to offense, like you're invited, someone invites you to offense. How do I know that I'm being invited to offense? <laughs> Um, if they say something they know is going to offend you or do something they know is going to offend you, they're inviting you to be offended. They're inviting you to hold a grudge. They're inviting you to respond in a negative way. You're invited here. Here's an invitation. Would you like to be offended today? Right. But that's, that's an invitation. You don't have to choose that. You can be like, you know, try Jesus, don't try me, right? <laughs> One of those phrases, right, that says, I'm, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go off on this person, or you can choose peace. And I just recommend that you choose peace. Does that mean you agree with your adversary? Well, it says the scripture actually says agree with your adversary quickly. But it doesn't mean that you're going along with something that is um, not within your, your values your core values. It's really important. That's why we said that first. It's important to know your core values so you can operate by them. But choose peace. Don't choose strife. Choose peace. Don't choose strife. Um, people get, everyone reaps what they sow. Everyone, including us. And I would also say that when we are in in that place where we're just, we're just feeling attacked on every side, um, a, a shadow, a valley of a shadow of death. The the death is a shadow. Okay, so choose choose peace is number two. Number three is death is only a shadow. Okay, death is only a shadow. It's a threat, right? We get into panic attacks. We get into depression. Um, we get into some of these deep emotional places because we are um, afraid. We're afraid of what hasn't happened, what we think might happen, what could happen, what what is set up to happen based on the circumstance, right? We're afraid of something who hasn't come, we're, that hasn't come. We're literally practicing response to something that has not arrived, okay? Death is only a shadow in the valley of the shadow of death. It is not the valley of death. It's the valley of the shadow of death, so the threat. Okay, understand that it is a threat. It's not real. It's just a threat at this time. Um, see past it. Also, everything works out for your good. Everything, if you if you are called according to his purpose, everything works out for your good. So even in, and I've heard mentors say, okay, if you're afraid of a circumstance, like think through that. Okay, what if the worst of the worst does happen? Then what will you do? Okay, and give yourself an answer. And then what will you do? So um, the the way I heard the story was a, a woman who was afraid of her husband having an affair and leaving her. And one day the Holy Spirit said, well, if that happens, what will you do? Well, I'll be really upset. Okay, and then what do you do? Well, I'll roll around the floor and pitch a fit. Okay, and then what will you do? I'll just cry and cry and scream. Okay. And then what would you do? Well, I'll call my mom, right? And then what would you do? Then I'd ask her what to do. And I might have to move out. And where would you move? I'd stay with my mom for a while. And then I'd get in. So she had, she planned out what her steps would be. And then it wasn't a deep, dark, scary mystery, right? It was just, if that happens, this is, this is my action plan. So I encourage you to do that too. If you have a fear that is lingering over your mind and heart that is torturing you, if there's a fear of a potential negative outcome that is torturing you, this is one way to cope. This is one way to walk through the valley of the shadow of death. All right, so what if that did happen? What would my action steps be? And then it's not a scary unknown. It's something that you prepared for, so to speak, if you needed to. All right. And no matter what happens, no matter what happens, everything works out for your good. No matter what happens, everything works out for your good and you'll be okay. How do I know this? Because horrible things have happened to you before and somehow you're still alive and okay and here and we're sharing virtual space together. 
So I know he'll see you through because he already has. And he will going forward. Okay. Step number four. This is four, I think. Forgive. How do you walk through the valley of the shadow of death? Forgive. You be like, oh, that's old news, Dallas. That's not fun. Okay. <laughs> okay. But it is required, especially when there, you know, when there's depression, when there's uh, panic attack level fear, and you know, fear or or sadness or hopelessness that is encroaching and and um, blocking the joy in your everyday life. I would encourage you to forgive. Forgive those who have offended you. Forgive yourself for not meeting your own expectations. Right. But if you feel like he has, right, if you feel like he has, then there's an issue in your own heart to deal with. So number four is forgive. How to walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Number five. I wrote down numbers and they're different. Number five, one step at a time. One step at a time. How you walk through the valley of the shadow of death. One step at a time. <laughs> this is how it's done. Uh, don't feel like you have to rush. Don't feel like there's uh, some big leaping thing that needs to happen. Just take one step at a time. One step at a time. You don't have to know all the steps on how you're going to get out of this. You don't have to know, you know, you don't have to know. You just have to know the next step. Just take one step at a time. All right. And the, here's what I say too. This is, uh, this is the last point, how to get through, how to walk through the valley of the shadow of death. When we're in a shadow of death, we have an invitation. Just like I said earlier, Getting to the new, God's going to make all things new, all things new, right? In order to get to the new, we have to make room for the new by getting rid of the old. And it's not a fun process, especially for those like myself. I like to treasure my memories. <laughs> I like to uh, accumulate things, accumulate accomplishments and, and the signs thereof. I like to look at all of my wonderfulness. <laughs> And the only problem with that is it fills up, fills up, fills up, and that leaves no room for the new. So it's, a, it's an actual and very important faith step to get rid of the old in your physical space, in your mind, in your heart, in your body, getting rid of the old to make room for the new, okay? And here's the opportunity when we're walking through a valley of a shadow of death. Here's the opportunity. We have the opportunity to be birthed into something new, into someone new. And we get to define what that is. That's incredible. We get to actually define what it is, how we are going to be made new. What's that going to look like? And ladies, I have a couple invitations for you. If you are local to the Tampa Bay area, there is an event coming up on Saturday, February 10th, it's called A Day of Healing Safe Emotions. And it's a one-day retreat in a beautiful location called Shiloh Farms. If you have never been, you should go just for the venue, just for the location. Um, but it's a beautiful, peaceful place uh, that just invites rest and peace and healing. And it's a day, it's a day you can treat yourself. And I don't mean treat yourself to the mall or a movie or another purse, like <laughs> treating yourself to healing, to freedom, treating yourself to, to alone time, right? Where you're not just surrounded by people who need you, kids or spouse or coworkers or church members or whomever that are pulling at you all the time. What if you could spend a day being poured into instead of pulled from? Right. That's a daily day of healing safe emotions and being able to release the trauma that's in our members, in our members, in our physical bodies. It's housed in our spirits. If you've ever heard of the book, The Body Keeps Score, it's about just that. It's a scientific. It's a book, but it, it's really uh, academic and it talks about all the studies involved in um, trauma recovery and how 
everyone, not just women, but everyone holds trauma in our bodies and it affects us. This is another reason why forgiveness is so valuable because the, the things in the soulish realm and the mind, will, and emotions, those scars, those experiences don't just go away because we lived physically lived past them. There's, there's things that happened in our bodies and our psyche that need to be dealt with. And it doesn't happen by accident. It has to be an intentional thing that we do. And so at a day of healing safe emotions, we're going to do some of that releasing. So you leave lighter. Whew, I am excited. <laughs> it's coming up on Saturday, February 10th. Again, if you were in the Tampa Bay area, I highly recommend that you attend. You can find more information about that at thereboundcoach.com forward slash events. That is thereboundcoach.com forward slash events. Now, if you're not in the Tampa Bay area, I have another invitation for you. <laughs> um, I have the honor of helping high achieving women of faith who have been through betrayal, trauma, or abuse reclaim territory in their relationship with themselves. In particular, I'm doing a special three month virtual coaching experience called Reclaim. And that's where we will be walking down the road with you. This is not just a one and done. This is not just a, oh, I'm listening to information. This is interactive. I want to hear from you. I want to see your homework. <laughs> There's homework. And we are actually walking down that road together. What if you could reclaim your peace? What if you could reclaim your confidence? Right? What if you can get back, get back the, the fun that you lost, the fun that you lost. I have, uh, I have an 11 and 12 year old and my 11 year old says, I don't want to grow up too fast. <laughs> and what she's really saying when you listen to her is she doesn't want to lose out on fun. And she feels like, you know, the grownups might lose out on fun. And it doesn't have to be that way. It literally doesn't have to be that way. We don't have to miss out on fun because we're adults. We can reclaim that territory. We can reclaim hope. We can reclaim joy and laughter and lightheartedness and positive expectation. How about that? We can reclaim feeling good about the future, <laughs> feeling good about the present and, and just the, the awe and the wonder of being excited about life. We can get back to that in full force. Even in our lives today, at 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, <laughs> we can get back to that. And so if that is something that you want to get back to, I would uh, encourage you can go to thereboundcoach.com forward slash rebound. I don't have that link to pop up here. But even if you go just to the regular page, if you just go to the regular thereboundcoach.com, you can slash re you can you can choose rebound or you can go to the store. Links are in both places where you can join reclaim. Okay. So I highly recommend you do that. We start February 15th. So you still have a little while. If you, you have a friend that you're like, Hey, and let's do this together. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. Um, and in March, which is so close y'all we're at the end of January already. I can't believe it. Okay. March 8, 9, and 10, we are having sanctuary experience, which normally I'd have a video for you and I have a testimony, but I cannot use it in its current state. <laughs> Long story, but I can't, I cannot um, say, I can't video share it with you. But what I can tell you is um, one of the testimonies from Pastor Michelle Colston, who attended her first sanctuary last year, um, she told us after she says, you still on cloud nine from the weekend. And one of the things that was really major for her, she said she had been in other inner healing experiences where they say, you know, imagine your, your inner child and, and what is she doing and help her heal. And she says, I would never see anything. I just saw black. I never saw anything. And through the sanctuary experience, she began to actually see her inner child, her inner little girl. She began to be able to release things. She says, I'm not an emotional person. You know, I'm just not, you know, she's rough and tough. Not an emotional person, 
but she actually got freedom in her emotions in her time at sanctuary. And it's a life-changing experience for everyone who experiences it. Everyone, every single person gets a life-changing experience out of it. And so I would highly recommend you to take an opportunity to join us this upcoming sanctuary, which will be on March 8th, 9th, and 10th. We will be in the Tampa Bay area and close to some water. So <laughs> you can find more information about that at thereboundcoach.com forward slash sanctuary. That is the reboundcoach.com forward slash sanctuary. Not only do you want to come, you don't want to come alone because um, it'll be better with your friend. All right. So check out those things. Um, I'd love to hear on the comments what stood out to you. Uh, if you feel like you are in the valley of the shadow of death and what you will do out of these steps to walk out of that with power, not only with your life, not only with your life, but with power, love, and a sound mind. Thank you so much again for joining me. I will see you next time. And until next time, everyone, choose life.